All right, so what we're going to do today is basically confidence intervals for comparing two means. So yesterday it was like, is are they equal to each other? Is one less than the other? Today we're going to get a set of values. So the conditions are basically the same. Condition one, the sample should be independent and randomly selected. We can assume the sample sizes are less than 10% population size. If we don't do the 10% rule, if we have random assignment. So if we have random assignment, then there's no 10% rule. Uh, the sample sizes are both large. We're going to do the box plots today. So get ready for that. Now, if we know the population standard deviation, we're going to do a two sample Z interval for comparing means. If we do not know the population standard deviation, we're going to do a two sample T interval interval for comparing means. And then go ahead and define mu1, mu2, like we did yesterday. So the formula is similar to yesterday. So if it's a Z confidence interval, X bar one minus X bar two, plus or minus our Z critical value, times sigma 1 squared over n1, sigma 2 squared over n2. If it's a t interval, x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus or minus your t critical value, times a big square root S1 squared over N1, S2 squared over N2. So the formula sheet will help you remember the formulas. Um, here's why it's formula sheet. So for confidence interval, it says the statistic plus or minus your critical value times your standard error. So your statistic right now is the two X bars subtracted. The critical value, I'm going to go over a sec in a second. And then the standard error is one of these two. These were our denominators yesterday. Now, go back to Chapter 9. You probably wish you were in Chapter 9. Yeah. The, if it's a T critical value, we have to use the degrees of freedom and the confidence level down here to find our critical values. Remember that from Chapter 9? If it's a Z, we use the infinity row. So those are going to come back again. Which calculator ones you're going to use? This is going to be interval test number nine, which is a two sample Z interval, or test zero, two sample T interval. So. We're going to focus on, so yesterday we did test three, four. This is test nine and or zero. Now, the only thing is, okay, so the conclusion is going to be a little bit different. The first sentence is the same as chapter nine. We are blank percent confident that the difference is between blank and blank. The second sentence, we have to talk about the end point because we're subtracting. So if both endpoints are positive, that means that mu1 is larger. Think about when you subtract. You get two positive numbers. The first number is the bigger number. If both endpoints are negative, mu2 is larger. If zero is in the interval, so you have a positive and a negative, this means that there could be no difference. 
if we were doing a hypothesis test, this would be the like fail to reject because the means would be the same. So you have to address this on the second sentence. So we're going to do two examples. One's just a regular and then we do the annoying one. So we have two kinds of thread are being compared for strength. 50 randomly selected pieces of each type of thread are tested under similar conditions. The sample data is given in the following table. Construct a 98% confidence interval for the difference of the two populations mean. So the, it happens every once in a while. People don't know when to do an interval, when to do a test. First of all, if it tells you to construct an interval, construct the interval. Seems obvious, but people don't do it right. If it says state and perform a test and it usually has some alpha level, that's when you know it's a hypothesis. And so far they've been separated, now they're together. Okay, so condition number one is the same as yesterday. Data is random and independently selected. 50 is less than 10% of each type of thread. Condition two, 50 is greater than 30 on both of these. So by the central limit theorem, we can assume our sampling distribution is approximately normal. T interval or Z interval? As we know our sample standard deviations. So two sample T interval for comparing means. And then I'm gonna say mu sub A, so I'm gonna use A and B instead of one and two. The true mean strength of thread A and B is the true mean strength of thread B. The AP exam likes when you use like the letters that are part of the problem. So for the testing section, there is no ho or ha, because we're not testing any the hypotheses. Every once in a while I'll have someone that writes it in, but you can skip all of that. Now here's where you can save yourself some time on the test. If everything's given to you in a nice little table, for listing everything, you can just write C table. And you don't have to rewrite it, because it's all nice and pretty in a table. But we are going to need degrees of freedom, and we are going to need our T critical value. But we can't find those until after we find our interval. Because, like I said yesterday, the degrees of freedom is not N minus 1 anymore. It's a crazy formula. So go to your calculator. Go to two sample T interval, test 0. Go to the stat side and then plug in your sample mean for each one, standard deviations, sample size, we are doing a 98% confidence interval and if it asks for pooled, just say no.
So my degrees of freedom, I'm going to round down to 96. So to find my T critical value, I go to 98%. 96 is not on here, so I'm going to round down again to 80. So it's going to be 2.374. So there's no test statistic. I'm just going to write my formula. 78.3 minus 87.2 plus or minus 2.374 times the square root of 5.62 squared over 50, 6.31 squared over 50, and then this is my interval. So there's no test statistic, don't ho ha, just list all your stuff, do your formula, give an interval. So my conclusion, first sentence is the same from chapter nine. We are 98% confident that the true mean difference, make sure you write difference because we're subtracting. So the true mean difference in strength from thread A to thread B is between negative 11.73 and negative 6.073. I don't know the units, so I'm not going to write the units. So both endpoints are negative. You can kind of tell by looking at the means. So thread B, I would think, is stronger. So since both endpoints are negative, It appears thread B is stronger. Questions? So kind of like what you did in Chapter 9, but plus stuff. Okay, so next one, let's do the dreaded box plot example. So in an attempt to determine if the two competing brands of cold medicine contain on average the same amount of acetaminophen, 12 different tablets from each of the two competing brands were randomly selected and tested for the amount of acetaminophen each contains. Here are the results in milligrams. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the mean difference. So in your calculator, go ahead and put brand A in list 1 and brand B in list 2. So we need to turn both box plots on. So go to second stat plot, and you want both plot one and plot two on. So plot one, make sure that you pick the um, box plot that has the outliers, list one. You can hit second mode to get out of there. 
and then hit second stat plot again. Turn plot two on, make sure it's in list two. Okay, then hit zoom nine. Oh, we have to do condition one. But do either one of these look um, skewed? This one's got a little right here, small, but other than that, we're good. So condition two, we're gonna be fine, but let's write condition one first. I got ahead of myself. So data is randomly and independently selected. 12 is less than 10% of all tablets of each brand. Now, when you do condition two, we're going to do one sketch for the two box plots. You can use one scale. So when I go to do this, this. I'm going to hit the trace button. So I hit the trace button and I'm going to go down and say, okay, the min is 481. You don't have to have every number. Q1's 493.5. I'm going to skip the median for brand B. Q3's 503. And the max is 517. And then I'm going to make sure to say, okay, this is brand B at the bottom. And then I'm going to go up to the top. The min here is 493. Q1's 504. Median's 515. 527. 541 and then I'm going to put brand A sort of at the top. So one scale, identify which box plot is which, and then put some of the numbers down at the bottom. Yes, I'm. Yeah. Okay, so then we're going to write small sample size. However, both box plots are approximately symmetric. Therefore, our population distributions are approximately normal. This is the only one that you're going to put plural population distributions because you have less than 12 from each population. We're not looking at the difference. So anytime you have data, it's a t-test. So this is a two sample T interval for comparing means. So I'm going to say mu A, the true mean amount of acetaminophen in brand A. And mu B is the true mean amount of acetaminophen in brand B. All 
Okay, the conditions is the hard part. <laughs> really. Now it's pretty easy. Except we don't know any of our stats. So we can't really do the formula. So we're going to work backwards. So for the testing section, you're going to need to list X bar for brand A, X bar for brand B, S for brand A, S for brand B. We know A, um, the sample size for A is 12, and we know N for B is 12. We don't know our degrees of freedom or our T critical value. So we know nothing. But the calculator will give it to us once we do our interval. So when you go to test zero this time, when you go to test zero this time, go to the data side. And then just say list ones, list one, list twos, list two. Frequency list, just leave one. This time we're doing a 95% confidence interval and we don't want it pooled. So I'm going to write it all out. So 515.6 repeating, 497.83 repeating, 15.14, 8.83. Degrees of freedom, I'm going to round down to 17. Then my T critical value is 2.11. So, formula 515.6 repeating minus 497.83 repeating plus or minus 2.11, 15.14 squared over 12, 8.83 squared over 12. And then the formula is 7.1889 to 28.478. So you, got, you do everything in the calculator and then you work that. This is why your AP test is all calculator. There's no non-calculator part. So our conclusion We are 95% confident that the true mean difference in the amount of acetaminophen between brand A And brand B is 7.1889 milligrams to 28.478 milligrams. Now, in this case, both endpoints are positive which you can kind of tell from the box plots, it looks like brand A has more. So since both endpoints are positive, it appears brand A has more Acetaminophen. Now again, if there was zero, if one was positive, one was negative, we could say it looks like both brands have the same, uh, could have the same amount of acetaminophen in them. So maybe there's no difference between the brands. Yes, I'm
then you could say that. You could say, I still think that brand whatever has more, even though it's a little bit. Because depending on the confidence interval, right? Depending on the, it depends on how wide or small your interval is. Confidence level one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me stop.